大家好，消防员救火救人，冲锋陷阵，实在佢哋喺精神健康上需要唔少支援。一阵讲下，依家首先报道梯形公寓喺多伦多呈现梯形建筑风格嘅商住大厦，外表好有特色，但被批评为浪费空间，因为一层面积比下一层少。不過咁嘅設計並唔係由地產發展商話事，而係政府有特別嘅原因作出規範。有人認為喺居住空間長期不足嘅年代，冇善於利用建築空間嘅規條，是否要更改呢？李永如報導。每一層向上遞減樓層面積，變相減少樓房建築內嘅可居住單位數目，增加設計成本之餘，亦限制一棟公寓內樓房買賣嘅交易數量。在商言商，點解商家仲會採用呢種梯形公寓設計呢？原來呢種梯形公寓並唔一定出於房地產開發商嘅設計意念，特別於多倫多，根據市政府所定立嘅建築要求，當建築商喺一啲商業與住宅共用嘅繁華地區內興建中高層住宅樓房，與路面寬度比較，大樓高度超過路面寬度八成以上嘅樓層。每一个后续楼层必须按照四十五度角向上递减，形成梯形。多伦多市政府对中高层楼房建筑规例报告指出，呢、这个建筑比例让对面行人道每日有五小时嘅阳光照射，递减楼层嘅住户睇唔到地面景观。呢、这个设计亦试图保障对面住户于家中前后院活动嘅私隐。而興建更高嘅樓房，則需要根據更複雜嘅四十五度角設計規例而建，以減少鄰舍因為得唔到充足陽光照射而造成嘅影響。有關注多倫多可負擔住屋短缺問題嘅團體指出，呢、這個建築要求已經沿用超過十年。今時今日，對於可負擔房屋供不應求嘅多倫多嚟講，採光成為一種奢侈嘅追求。佢哋希望市政府放宽呢种四十五度角楼层设计嘅建筑要求，充分利用大楼空间建造住屋单位。So if you looked at this building behind us here,、um, you know there's probably a third of that building is lost because of this kind of wedding cake or Mayan pyramid design that the city of Toronto requires builders to build because we want to stop shadow, we want to stop overlook. It just kills the ability to deliver affordable housing. The ability to deliver family-sized units, the ability to deliver accessible units for people in wheelchairs, because every floor is smaller than the floor below it, and that means more expensive engineering,、uh, and it's just harder. You don't have a. You need to make relatively simple-shaped buildings to make affordable housing math work today. 呢一日，采访队拍摄嘅地段位于多伦多 Danforth 街、介乎 Woodbine 同 Victoria Park 之间范围。呢度有唔少按照市府規例而建嘅梯形公寓。Blair 係城市規劃師，當年亦有份參與擬定呢個四十五度角建築要求。佢認為有必要定期審視建築規例是否與當今民生問題相關。Repurposed in part to accommodate for、um, bicycle, dedicated bicycle lanes. Right, they have wide sidewalks, big patios, commercial businesses. It's underutilized, and it has, you know, a lot of capacity for growth that remains unrealized. I think it's important to acknowledge and understand that things change. Right, in 2010, we weren't. Rightly or wrongly, we were not as concerned about the housing crisis. With all of these things, you know, the cost of labor, the cost of materials is going up, and then we have this very convoluted, complex regulatory and policy framework, and all these guidelines. And on top of that, there are other things. Some avenues have, you know, heritage preservation, you know, requirements for any number of buildings that are very difficult to work with. And you know, so we're we're limiting the number of sites that are ripe for mid-rise development by placing all of these additional constraints on them. 呢、这個設喺烏白地鐵站附近嘅告示牌，圖片顯示該路段將興建新嘅梯形公寓。Mark 表示，如果按照四平八穩傳統設計，呢啲範圍可以被填補，蓋上更多住屋單位，以解決可負擔房屋短缺嘅問題。市政府需要喺讓市民安居同採光或者保護私隱之間作個平衡。有學者亦表示，雖然逐層遞減嘅設計有佢嘅可取之處，但不能總以四十五度角要求一概而論。
It's something that originated in New York and in many cities in Europe, but not the 45 degree. So on larger scale buildings, they've all gone through a very extensive review and negotiation process, which has just slowed development down. And often in the end, the city surrenders. There are many ways to build. There are many building forms. Some of them offer a great deal of amenity. They don't all necessarily fit within a 45 degree angular plane. We live in a climate here where the sun angle is very different uh, in winter than it is in summer. So how can you apply a single condition of the incidence of the sun angle? 多倫多市議會於上年十一月通過嘅包容性分區政策，要求房地產開發商從今年開始喺建造擁有一百個單位以上市場價格住房嘅同時，將其總面積百分之五至十用於可負擔出租屋或者出售單位。而到咗二零三零年，可負擔房屋預留單位份額則增加到百分之八至二十二。但如果依照四十五度角楼房设计规例兴建住宅楼房，开发商则被限制喺大楼内建造更多可居住单位及减少设计成本，恐怕将难以迎合市府呢个包容性分区政策